it's, it's, it sounds obvious, but the why dictates so much of the project scope when you start to build the, out the requirements and set expectations for the challenges you need to overcome, um, in, 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 particularly in these tenant migrations. Uh, we worked in such a diverse range of contexts for tenant migration, from high profile acquisitions to amalgamating disparate tenants that have been sort of getting by uh, operating in silos to highly sensitive divestitures with lots of politics and, and Chinese security walls to factor in. Um, we've even seen a tenant migration required because someone made a really poor choice in, in naming their tenant with the IT admin's name. Uh, in the initial setup and, and suddenly this name appeared and, and, and many of the URLs and links that were being used on the tenant. Some of the reasons for migration uh, establishes a range of questions that you really need to consider to create the policies, controls and settings in the new tenant. So a few examples that, that we've worked with and some of the experiences we've had is, um, for example, in a merger, or acquisition, th there really is, first of all, I think quite a different sense of kind of togetherness. Um, you know, the organizations are, are going forward together. So there's an opportunity to balance both the security and governance policies, which apply to both, but also look at potentially what's good for both organizations going into the future. Uh, and, and that's important because there is, you know, the, there's, there's definitely uh, more cooperation between the organizations. And some of the other um, scenarios we've worked in is, for example, geographical, where, where we've had different geographical data locations or data changes. And, and, and here, either, for example, um, a, a region, uh, one of the Microsoft data centers perhaps wasn't available when the when the tenant was created. Or, for example, it, it's it's a large global business. They've been they run a relatively federated IT organization. And in the scenario, potentially there are a number of um, regions have their own tenants and, and as the organization looks to the efficiencies and potentially from licensing by, by being able to do the licensing um, centrally and then also looking to centralize control around both security and governance, um, there's potentially a requirement to, to, bring, to bring some of those tenants back under, under a single tenant umbrella. The other um, example we've had which is slightly different is, for example, organizations which you know, from a geopolitical perspective have for example a, a business in china where there's actually a legal requirement that the business in china sits in a tenant within the within china where on the other side of what you know the, the great wall of china as it were the great electronic wall of china so so different scenarios there from from the from the geo side of things um in a divestiture situation these are usually uh, a little more tricky we in this situation, you know, we, we've had we've had, we've had experience of businesses that are right sizing, or that are going back to their core, um, you know, their core business and and looking to sell off parts of the business. The other slightly tricky thing here is usually when they sell those the, the subsidiaries or, or subsections of their business, they're often selling them to somebody in the same vertical or even a competitor in the industry. So it's a lot more. There's a lot more sensitivities around the tooling and the process we use to actually carve out just the information that's pertinent to that business because you really are now having to separate the information out of an existing business to be able to migrate that information over to to either the new subsidiary if it's going on its own or or if it's or if it's a or if it's it's actually joining another organization and, and we found we've, we've needed to broker and create a lot of trust we we've worked with a global catering and hygiene business um where the remit was a, a divestiture as i just discussed um one you know one unit having been sold off and, and here it was exactly the case i think uh, without winning the trust of the business that was, uh, you know, that was divesting uh, out of that organization, it would have been very hard to complete to complete the uh, to to complete the process. We really had to go into a lot of detail around the scope, the scoping, and and the the data privacy, and um, actually being a third party in the scenario in in some ways were, were, was a help because we could kind of prove. Uh, to have you know to have both both organizations uh, interests at heart but but certainly that was the most important part of the of the project was working with that and defining those boundaries um, 
Yeah, so um, another example, um, a global fintech organization. Um, this one was interesting in that um, the organization were two very large fintech organizations emerging, but going to a new corporate identity and they actually made the decision to create a net new tenant. Um, and this was interesting. And again, you, you, a, a lot of a lot of um, cooperation because it's in everyone's best interest to, to get all the settings and, and, and really take advantage and opportunity to improve security and governance and make sure there's a smooth migration. But probably the thing we we, we had here was was lesson that you know there's no one tool or one tool one size fits all solution. These were large organisations previously, um, both the the uh, founding organizations had also grown by uh, by acquisition. So we had, uh, I think it was more than 12 uh, domains from an identity and management perspective, which all needed to be synchronized onto the new tenant so that when, for example, users changed their passwords, that was synchronized properly through uh, into the new platform. Um, and, you know, literally you, you, you can land up with a, with a help desk getting flooded. Uh, they also had, you know, various different workloads such as archives and various other things that needed to be taken into account. So really a case of understanding the situation, making sure we had a number of different tool sets. Some of the organizations, for example, weren't actually physically linked by a network um, and some of that uh, synchronization needed to be done over secure Internet connections. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, sometimes uh, you certainly need to think out of the box and, and look at some of the different different tooling.